first. Chapter 19 is very heavy on reactions that involve enolates, which we saw from chapter 18. Enolates being where you have an O minus that is a single bond to a carbon carbon double bond. Now, we know we can make these from carbonyls like C, a C double bond O, and then some good base like OH minus comes in and pulls off that proton, forming a double bond, and that swings up. And that's how you typically get your enolate. One important point to always remember about your enolates, though, is that the O minus is almost never the thing that does the attack, because that O minus always looks to swing back down and reform the double bond O, which means the electrons from this double bond are what get kicked out and do the attacks. And remember, there's a resonance structure that can help you double check which carbon things should get connected to, because if I do that arrow and then move this down like that, I would have the negative charge on this carbon over here. So Whenever you have an enolate, the oxygen never does the attack, and the carbon at the end of the double bond is the one that always does the attack. Okay? And, that we've, and we've seen that that can really attack a bunch of different things. Most commonly for the last exam, it was some carbon with a leaving group on it, or a compound containing two halogens. In either case, the way you would draw this is either you draw the resonance, get the negative on that carbon, and then that negative carbon goes out and attacks whatever. Or you can just draw straight from the enolate itself, and in that case you draw from the center of the carbon-carbon double bond to whatever it's attacking. Either the carbon and the bromine gets kicked out as a leaving group, or if there are two halogens, you can attack that and the other halogen gets kicked out. And let's just focus on the carbon for now. The net result of that would be your carbonyl, and now on that carbon on the end, you have whatever was attacked. If it was Br2, it would be a Br there, but I attacked CH3Br, so it would be a CH3 group. Okay? And that's the general gist of enolates. Now, one of the most common questions I heard was, how do you know when you're forming an enolate versus when you're attacking the carbonyl? And there's a pretty straightforward reasoning for when you're doing one or the other. Let's compare two different structures. One, a ketone. Just a carbonyl with two carbons on either side, and then an acyl halide, a carbonyl with one methyl, but one chlorine. And now, in both cases, we're going to react them with OH minus. Let's start with the acyl halide, because this one should look familiar to you. Chlorine, we know, is a really, really good leaving group, and it's going to pull, and we know it's also very electronegative, which is why it's a good leaving group. It's pulling electrons away from this carbon which we also know through resonance with the oxygen, can become O minus carbon positive. So this carbon is very, very positive, which means that O minus is almost always going to look to attack this carbon right here. And that will swing up. That would leave you with a tetra tetrahedral intermediate we'd love to talk about, O minus, the OH that attacked, the chlorine, and then the carbon that was there. Now this is the key point. Whenever you have an O minus, that O minus is always going to look to swing down and reform its double bond, kind of like what we saw when I drew out the enolate before. The thing is, it can't do that unless there's a good leaving group attached, something that isn't a carbon or a hydrogen. So this is going to look to swing back down. And is there a good leaving group? Yes, there's a very electronegative chlorine, and there's a fairly electronegative oxygen. Between chlorine and oxygen, though, chlorine is the much better leaving group, which means it will always get kicked out. And so the net result of this would be reform the carbonyl, and now you have an OH there. So in general, you know the OH is going to attack a carbon, or a carbonyl, because that carbonyl has a good leaving group on it, be it a chlorine or an OCH3 or something of that nature. On the other hand, here, this carbon only has carbon attached to it, right? Only CH3 groups. There's no good leaving group, which means if that OCH, or if that OH- minus were to attack here, and this swings up, well, you still get that tetrahedral intermediate, O minus, the OH is attached, and you have two carbons. But this is the difference. Here we had a chlorine. A chlorine is a much better leaving group than an OH. Here, we only have carbons, and then that OH, which means this O minus is still going to look to swing back down and form a double bond, but the only thing that's able to be kicked out is that OH, which means you can instantly go back to what you started with, this. And that's why you know, yes, technically the OH attacks the carbonyl, 
but the net result would be nothing. That's why you know this is going to form anally, not have an OH attached there. Which means rather than this being the mechanism, even if it could happen, what really will end up happening in the end, the net result, is it's going to pull off one of these hydrogens. And so it'll go there, grab that H, and form the enolate like we've seen. Okay, So that's the key difference. Either you have a carbonyl with nothing but carbons or hydrogens, or you have a carbonyl that has a good leaving group attached to it at the same time. In that case, you might not always form the enolate. You might kick out that leaving group instead.